الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي لا نبي بعض الله سبحانه وتعالى has commanded us with the greatest thing which is Tawheed and prohibited us from the worst thing which is Shirk and as we witness here the somewhat eeriness that we see before us that's the example of Shirk or this is an analogy for the shirk for polytheism that is something which brings about darkness and oppression as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran about shirk that he doesn't forgive it and that it is a, a type of oppression. That shirk is a vulnul azim. Shirk is a great form of oppression. That's the worst type of oppression. It isn't what we witness, unfortunately, with our brothers and sisters that are suffering in Syria and suffering uh, in Egypt and suffering wherever they're being oppressed and put down and killed. But shirk is the worst oppression. This is the thing that is most hated by law. Those things, oppressing people and killing people and slaughtering people, harming people, this is all evilness. This is all something that Allah hates. Allah prohibits oppression. But shirk is the greatest oppression that you commit shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that you associate a partner with Him, subhanahu Ta'ala. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he does not forgive the one who dies upon shirk. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitabihi al-kareem inna Allah la yaghfiru an yushrika bi وَيَغْفِرُ مَا دُونَ ذَلِكَ لِمَنْ يَشَاءَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Verily Allah does not forgive that you associate partners with Him but He forgives other than that for whomsoever He pleases So shirk ayu al-ahabba is detested by your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala and he commands us with Tawheed to worship him and him alone. And this is why this is the call of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. I know many people, they get tired of hearing about Shirk and Tawheed. And they feel that they've heard all there is to hear about Shirk and Tawheed. But if Shirk, studying Shirk, and being aware of shirk on how, and how to stay away from it. And tawheed. How to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And knowing his tawheed weren't the most important things. Then Allah would not have said what he has said about it in his book. Saying that he does not forgive the one. He forgives everything else. Everything else. You have an opportunity if you die upon it. But if you die upon shirk, associating a partner with Allah, and in fact, kufr, dying on kufr al-akbar, you don't have any opportunity. You are finished. And you'll be in the hellfire forever. وَعِيَاذٍ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكَ And that's why there's such a stress from Ahl sunnah that you hear them not emphasizing things like what people believe are contemporary issues like revolting and rebelling and political participation 
and all the other things that people busy themselves with. Islamic anashid, Islam, Islamic musicals, songs, Islamic plays and dances, and Islamic new ways of dhikr, new forms of ibadah that people have tried to conjure up. Ahl Sunnah doesn't busy themselves with that, nor researching into those things to try to uh, make something which has no background or no support from the Quran and the Sunnah. They don't look to, to those things, but they involve themselves with calling people back to Tawheed, the oneness of Allah, because ultimately everything, all the sciences in Islam, Come back to Tawheed. That's our foundation. Our foundation is based on worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. When we learn about the prayer, we learn about Tahara. We learn about those things so that we can practice, we can properly practice Tawheed. Because your prayer is your communication with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if you pray, even with correct tahara and purification. But you're praying with, you're praying to Allah, someone else. You're praying with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Along with Allah, you're praying to someone else. You're directing your worship to Sayyid so and so. Or Sayyidah so and so. Or whoever. Or even the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's not going to benefit you because it was on shirk. Because you violated that foundation. And if you make hajj or umrah or even if you sacrifice an animal but you do it for the sake of someone else. You do it as an act of worship and you share in that worship or direct that worship to other than Allah or someone with Allah, then again it's shirk and you violated what could have been an excellent act of worship and a great high level of worship that Allah would have been pleased with. So this is why Ahl Sunnah calls the Tawheed and calls to avoid shirk and we ask Allah the Almighty to bless us in that and bless us with ikhlas, with abad ala sunnah, wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad.